Bien, bonjour à tous. Good afternoon. My name is Philippe Escande. I'm a journalist for the world daily newspaper, Le Monde Daily Newspaper. Now, this conference reorganizing the health and dependency system. France uh, used to proud itself of having the best healthcare system in the world because of its scope, its, out, its results, and its cost, more than 11% of the GDP, you know, one of the highest in Europe, next to Germany and Switzerland. And in just one month, the whole system collapsed, you know, saturated hospitals, missing uh, equipment, you know, uh, not to mention the, the situation in uh, pensioners' house, the EPAD, which actually paid quite a, a, a tribute to the paid at a cost, you know. So we've, did, we've blamed just about everything, centralization, the weight, yet the absence of the state, and of course, the salaries of the healthcare employees. Now, is the system really inefficient? Sclerotic, should we spend more, better? Then to this we add another dimension, another question, which is that of dependency. The Parliament is discussing the creation of a new branch of a national health system associated with the loss of autonomy. Of course, we will not be able to answer all the questions, but we have with us seven key players who all represent a link of this uh, healthcare chain in France. They will share with us their experience, the three months of crisis, and their ideas to improve how the system could be improved in terms of the curative and preventive. Let me introduce the participants. Roselyne Bachelot, a former Minister of Health from 2007-2010. Bernard Ben Said, CEO of DEC, Dr. Gessio. Sylvain Rabuel, President of the Domus Life uh, Group. Aurélien Rousseau, Director of the Regional Healthcare uh, Agency, Ile de France. And with us in visio conference from uh, Alsace, uh, near the Jean Rotner, President of the Grand Grand Est, Est region, as well as Pierre Yves Joffard, our uh, friend. Oh, sorry, I forgot Frédéric Collet. Sorry, Frédéric Collet, President of Novartis France and of the uh, drug development companies. And then Pierre Yves Joffard, who is the member of the Circle des Economistes, director of the Paris School of Economics and the healthcare specialist. Good. So, since as usual, Pierre Yves, you will somewhat uh, kick off the discussion and introduce the debate. Now, is there something broken in the healthcare system in France? Well, you've asked already many questions. I'll try to propose a sort of a new axis of analysis. And I think what this, uh, I mean, it's too early to draw lessons from this crisis. But what we see is that what should, we have to make a difference between a uh, uh, health care system in France and the, uh, well, uh, the hospitals have shown in France that they can handle a crisis for which they have not been designed and prepared. And it's quite normal, but it has shown the agility, adaptability the, uh, to react to the crisis. So that's on the good surprise. Now, that's for the. Uh, now, on the contrary, if we change the views and we go from uh, health to care to health, well, in terms of preparation, anticipation, and so on and so forth, well, to say things simply, it's a bit too early to draw conclusions or take stock of the situation, but what's clear is that we could have done better. Uh, other countries were much better prepared than we were, and they were able to avoid all the uh, drastic measurements such as a general lockdown, uh, especially because they had um, test kits and they had in higher quantities. And this made it possible to, uh, therefore, they did not have to make the same decisions, which in terms of, uh, in societal and economic terms, will be really huge. Now, another aspect of this crisis and the response thereof is the question of territories. This is a pandemic which is heterogeneous and from the start, you know, strong heterogeneousness between regions, but even within regions and even within the department between uh, territories almost, almost, almost uh, localities or municipalities. So, and therefore, the response provided by France was uniform, that is, confinement to all 
end of story. And regardless of the uh, local situation at the time the decision was made. So there's the, uh, there were more subtlety and, uh, and um, the detail when the de-confinement or the end of lockdown, you know, the green department, the orange department, the red ones, even though we didn't, we were not quite sure what it was all about. But anyway, that was uh, better managed, more finely tuned managed. So the question we should ask about, so what is the form of decentralization? Do we just say, okay, we need to decentralize, but how do we decentralize? Do we do a top-down decentralization? That is basically which goes to prefer uh, original health agencies and so on and so forth, or do we rely on local elected officials, on population, on uh, on local doctors? So these are the issues we face, but uh, I'm, I'm eager to hear the, the speakers on this dimension in addition to dimensions and questions you mentioned. So anyway, we will talk about all these topics. Rosalind Bachelot, I'll start with you. Now, we hear you a lot, actually, right now. You were uh, went to a parliamentary hearing on the, uh, on the uh, health crisis. You are a witness of choice. You were a minister of health between uh, 2007 and You had to deal with another pandemic. But, you know, you, you also faced a problem there at the time because you were blamed for having uh, ordered too many uh, masks. So you d you uh, also designed the latest uh, law in France, which uh, led to the creation of the regional health care agency, health agency. So based on your experience, uh, what, what uh, did you find striking or strange in the current crisis? And what uh, pol health care policy problems were highlighted? In addition, I was for two years minister in charge of medical social issues, uh, following my experience as a minister of health. What struck me in that crisis is that it, uh, it did not reveal anything new, but it did shed a light on some characteristics. Uh, are there dysfunction? Well, you know, they're not always dysfunctions, but characteristics of the national French. Uh, the French national health care system. We see through the crisis that we, we could see the strengths and weaknesses. First, we are hospital centric quite significantly. And therefore, the hospital is clearly the architect of the health care system and the other elements uh, being grafted to the hospital. Now, the hospital became what should never be the location where you go for just current health care problems. For example, uh, they have to deal uh, um, uh, the, the problem of like, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, ER, you know, uh, you know, I kept the uh, the the the, um, the um, 18 million, you know, there was there, 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 when I left, there was 18 million uh, treatments, and now it's 25 million. No justification for such an increase. And then management of end of life care, because France is a country which sends the highest number of elderly people to die in hospital when they have nothing to do. It's a kind of uh, uh, collective mental cruelty, uh, mistreatment we impose our, uh, to our senior citizens. So, Faced with this, the hospital is trying to find a way out, and they think they'll find a solution through uh, the uh, blaming of the administration and the restoration of the power of doctors, uh, of, me of uh, medical uh, knowledge. And this is the sort of absolute right to additional funds. Now, at one stage, if you say discussion, reorganization, reshuffling, organization, optimization, good administration, this is considered as uh, an insult 
or a rude word, and is it, or even a, a, a marching battle against the French healthcare system. So I think there is a medical social system which has made a lot of improvement in terms of uh, uh, hospitality. I've visited the hundreds of uh, uh, pensioners' house or old homes. Also, there are still difficulties, but when you see in the medical social systems now, we, you, you must admire what the regional council have done to really upgrade uh, their activities, uh, social life, but care was not enough, did not follow suit. And of course, this is reinforces the, the, the pressure on the hospital. And then a so-called urban or first uh, emergency or first care uh, medicine, which is poorly organized and de facto or because of its structure and due to the fact that uh, uh, the, uh, the the system uh, that refused any authori the, the authoritarian organization that would be necessary to reorganize, reshuffle the healthcare system. I talk under the control of uh, Sebastian Rousseau. You see the uh, healthcare permanence, which is a quite a scandal. Now, we know the solutions. We know the solutions. Solutions are well known. Together, we need to uh, 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 design this, develop this concept in front of the national the parliament. We have to have a resilient society. This is a, a, a society which thinks that healthcare is not just a household, it is a public issue. We have to go from a care system to a public health system. And I won't go any further, but anyway, it, this would be an element of discussion. I'll leave, uh, okay, we will react to, to, to ideas we have about the world, tomorrow's world. But anyway, I now give the floor to Bernard Ben Said over there. You are heading a group which manages hospitals, about 10 of them, EPADs or uh, pensioners' homes, and thousands of, you have thousands of employees who work at home now, or do home care. Now, at the head of this group, how, how did you experience the crisis and what lessons did you learn? I fully agree with uh, Mrs. Bachelot. The uh, lessons we've learned, these dysfunctions we see are the result of dysfunctions, which are almost institutional dysfunctions. We experienced a crisis, went through the crisis in a sort of a privileged way because we were a global player. We could see what was going on in hospital, what was going on at home, and in the pensioners' home. So we, we could, we, you know. Uh, we, we could see what was going on in the hospital, so we confined in the uh, homo, in the homes before everybody. Then, at the same time, in the EPADs, we were able to ensure care, which was uh, better controlled because we had the hospitals. And for me, the solution, the answer, if you want, to the institutional dysfunctions, uh, well. Um, that we could observe was indeed the creation in France of global operators. So we cannot imagine that uh, everything goes around the hospital. Of course, uh, uh, is, uh, in, in France, we have an amazing uh, dysfunction. That is, we have the regional healthcare health agencies, which are the uh, regulating the system, the uh, regulating authority, and they also, author, you know, and they, they, they control. So you, you, you control and you regulate. So you end up with Inequal situations, you know, unequal situations, you know, the so we've seen how the hospitals got advantage of that, so it's not good. So I think uh, global operators who in the territory could, well, in relation with the politicians, could ensure the all pathway for better care, for better knowledge of patients, and and to ensure a form of regulation. Now, in the domain of uh, relationship between private and public, how did it work? Were the relationship good? No, 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 they were not good, of course not. Because globally, uh, the fact that the agencies, you know, and I don't target anybody here, uh, uh, 
uh, they, they targeted the public, so the public took most of the patients, public hospital took most of the patients. Uh, the public took most of the resources because uh, I think 600 million euros, the public hospital like, got 95 percent, while private hospitals had 30 to 40 percent of the uh, resuscitation beds. And you saw, you said that the uh, public uh, uh, unions left because they said uh, the discussion is still they don't want private hospital to get uh, enjoy part of the six billions to improve the uh, healthcare system. So. Now, we'll get back to this soon. Let's uh, now uh, remain in the uh, domain of senior citizens. Silvera Bellu uh, run Domus V, which is one of the main European players for um, uh, for nursing homes, elderly nursing homes. We were in uh, front, at the front line with more 200 pads in France. And uh, so you, for you, what was the striking aspect of the current crisis? Uh, so this is the main uh, point, which is quite important vis-à-vis -vis the, the, the topic of the afternoon, which is to build or reinforce all the, the, the employees. So that is basically there is, uh, um, there is a, a kind of a bit of a cliche in your domain, which is that uh, people who work there uh, tend to do this uh, because they can't do something else. And those, uh, they, those are low value jobs. It's wrong. I spent a lot of time in my institutions with my teams, but you know, that was striking during this crisis. You know, this, so, you know, not only were the staff competent, uh, uh, you know, a human dimension, they were highly professional and they were amazingly committed. And they, they, which bears witness of the beauty of their jobs. And uh, I would like to insist to thank them publicly and to say that we do have a, uh, we have a huge problem of vocations in France uh, to, for uh, any professions in nursing homes for elderly uh, citizens. And in the next 50, 10, 15, in the coming 10, 15 years, we have to uh, get vocations, new vocations, m m massive new jobs, to um, to deal with the uh, the demographic trend. And for example, in, during this uh, uh, crisis, the employees and uh, were more than up to the challenge. And for the first time, possibly, showed to the public the showed the beauty, the greatness of their professions. They were always looked at the sort of the uh, low rate healthcare patient or low class healthcare patient, but I think this will be a pivotal point. Now, another observation, the partitioning or departitioning, you know, or uh, confinement or the confinement. Well, we, we, we were able to separate the uh, uh, home care uh, activities and the uh, nursing home activities. A lot of our home care employees went to work into uh, nursing homes, and it is one of the leads to rebuild, is to departition, repartition, talk about sanitary and medical so Well, I think uh, within the medical social, uh, the home care activities and uh, home activi uh, uh, and sorry, the household activity or private home activities and nursing home activities are partitioned. So clearly, there is a striking uh, stake for de departitioning our collective system. Third point. We are looking at, the, we are taking stock of the situation, whereas the pandemic is not finished. It's far from being over. And uh, well, in the nursing homes, we were able to protect uh, our uh, patient, elderly patients through uh, lockdown. Very strict, very, very strict. It was done at the price of amazing isolation of, this, of these uh, residents. And if uh, in the coming months or weeks, we have a, the epidemic strikes again. This system cannot be reproduced again as such. So as far as I'm concerned, you know, I've asked my teams to work on a system that would make it possible to, conf to combine confinement and maintain of social activities and social links for reasons of mental health, you know. You know, because then it's not, we're not talking about lockdown. Now you're talking about sentence in jail. So, uh, you know, prison. And for the next time, we know, we have been warned. So I will do my job when it comes to my institution. But at one stage, I will need the support from the public authorities. 
because my you know they have to uh, my my authorities have to support me but we have to prepare confine confine and maintain man, and the, man, the, the preservation of social and family links frederic collet you preside the french uh, of the novartis swiss laboratory the french affiliate and you president of the french federation of drug companies the len um, of course, we talked a lot about uh, the last few months about the uh, the shortage, sovereignty, uh, industrialization, deindustrialization. So, in your opinion, in that respect, well, you had to deal with both sides to produce the drugs needed. Uh, what did you learn from the crisis? Uh, well, I would pick up on what uh, the minister said. Uh, when we say nothing has changed, I think a lot has changed during this crisis. And let me give you a few examples. Everything's changed in research, for example. We would probably be able, when it used to take um, several years to come up with a vaccine, to do it in less than two years. Um, and. Uh, in terms of clinical trials as well, we've uh, been able to set up 90 uh, clinical cr trials. And in some examples, it took only three weeks to uh, set up a clinical trial. What's also changed is uh, in terms of uh, uh, cooperation, uh, big laboratories uh, got together with small ones. There's been a lot of cooperation between the private sector and the public sector. I'm thinking of cooperation with the University of Oxford. Uh, and in uh, the field of innovation, there's been uh, uh, incredible cross-fertilization. Um, there's the French startup company that is developing this digital twin that can help us predict uh, how efficient a uh, therapy uh, will be. So um, I think we should say that um, before uh, we say that we knew it all and we should have known better, uh, we should say that we've learned a lot from this crisis. It's been ex extremely fruitful. But uh, I would still agree with what the minister said. Um, we, sh we should have known better because at the end of the day, uh, we should have known. Um, uh, and we uh, knew that we had lost in terms of uh, clinical attractiveness. We used to rank first, we're now, we now rank fourth. In terms of access to innovative therapies, we've also um, uh, dropped. Uh, uh, so I'm not saying we should um, um, uh, you know, get rid of the baby with the bathwater, but uh, there's a lot we should have known better. As we were preparing for this session, um, you told us that on some drugs you had a demand that was a thousand times uh, bigger than in the past. Yes, because you know we've um, uh, seems we've realised during this crisis that we were extremely dependent on China and Asia uh, uh, for our supply in drugs, and we um, suddenly thought uh, it dawned on us that uh, if the borders were to be closed, we would be um, uh, you know uh, uh, done for. But actually, we realized um, that the um, uh, drug um, supply chain actually was more resilient than we thought. Uh, even though we've had to tackle demand that was 1,000 times what we experienced before, uh, I remember that we had to supply in, a, in a, a matter of one week what we uh, used to supply uh, over a period of a year. So there were peaks in demand that were totally unexpected. And yet, the response was uh, coordinated. Uh, a lot of um, uh, pharmaceutical companies did the, did the job, uh, as well as uh, uh, other stakeholders. Let me now turn to Jean Rotner, uh, who is uh, with us from the, um, uh, Alsace. Can I say hello to Jean Rotner, says Ms. Bachelot. Uh, hello, Rosalind. How are you? So, Jean Rotner, 
Uh, you are at the head of the local government in uh, Alsace. You are from Mulhouse. You were the mayor of uh, the city of Mulhouse, uh, which was at the w w sort of the eye of the storm during the pandemics in France. But you are also an uh, uh, emergency doctor um, uh, by training, so uh, you really tick all the boxes when we look for someone to um, uh, give us uh, their opinion. What is your stance, uh, bearing in mind what's happened in your uh, part of the country? Well, uh, and uh, actually, um, I'm speaking from the uh, office of the head of the local hospital network because we have a, vi a video conference uh, uh, afterwards. Well, the first lesson uh, learned uh, on, on, on a personal uh, basis and uh, which taught us humility. I agree with uh, what Rosalind said, Ms. Bachelot. We should have known better because everything um, we experienced we uh, actually should have known uh, but I was still uh, amazed at the capacity uh, that our uh, healthcare professionals and hospital staff demonstrated. It wasn't a given. Uh, they were not necessarily fully organized at first but they were able to get organized very quickly. Uh, uh, in Mulhouse, we've had a number of uh, organizational and structural uh, difficulties uh, in our hospitals uh, to tackle. And we tend to forget that uh, uh, here in uh, Alsace, uh, what we were facing was a viral steamroller. You know, we uh, had to react very quickly we had to get organized uh, in our uh, local uh, area but there was also a lot of solidarity between regions and night and day helicopters would um, uh, fly over uh, cities to transfer patients to Reims, Metz, Troyes, Nancy and in Alsace there was a bit of a uh, uh, delay, a bit of lag time uh, that saved us uh, between Strasbourg on the one hand and Mulhouse and Colmar on the other, um, which is why we had some kind of a buffer uh, that we could make the most of. of. So uh, we uh, got organized uh, as we went along, but there was a lot of disorganizing, uh, disorganization in terms of uh, face masks. And um, together with the state, we've had to find ways of um, not competing, but uh, uh, getting organized and organize a form of solidarity uh, between uh, all of us um, uh, in all our roles and responsibilities. And as an ER doctor uh, faced with this crisis, uh, you need a leader. Uh, and I uh, lament the fact that um, because there's, you have on the one hand the representative of the state, the prefet, and on the other hand the regional health uh, agency, um, sometimes their scopes and remits uh, tend to overlap. So I think we need to change that system in France. We need to uh, draw the conclusions of this crisis. And um, if there is to be a new crisis, we need to react differently in terms of the organization of the health uh, care system. We need to organize the health system differently. Right. Thank you for uh, this uh, uh, first-hand uh, uh, account. We'll come back to the role of uh, administration, the state representative, the regional health agency. Well, uh, let's talk about those regional health agencies. Um, Aurélien Rousseau, you... Uh, uh, played an important role because you were at the head of the Paris region um, uh, health agency. Those regional health agencies that were created under Rosaline Bachelot's uh, term uh, as uh, health minister was uh, under a lot of attacks. Um, if we try to understand um, 
uh, I'm thinking of the general public. Uh, if if we want the general public to understand how those regional uh, health agencies work and did they work properly during the crisis? Well, first, I want to emphasize that the crisis is not over. We still have 300 patients in critical care in, Par in the Paris region uh, due to uh, COVID-19. And we have several thousand patients that are in um, uh, hospital wards. Um, so, um, uh, so I'm all for feedback. Uh, I'm all from learning from uh, our uh, mistakes and our experience, but we'll have uh, to respond if uh, there is a second wave. So um, there was a, 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 str uh, a strong belief uh, and I, I speak under the authority of Rosalind Bachelot. There was this uh, uh, conviction that we had to um, uh, break silos between the health uh, healthcare system and residential uh, care. That we uh, and uh, it used to be that there were eight or nine different authorities uh, uh, making decisions over those uh, different parts of the uh, health system, and it was uh, thought that uh, one single authority would make for more efficiency. And after such a crisis, after 30,000 deaths, uh, we have to ask ourselves, what did we do well and what could we have done better? Uh, the first intuition, which was to break those silos, uh, uh, has been uh, proven right. Uh, I want to say this very simply and clearly. Had we not had the capacity at one point in assisted living homes uh, to um, get uh, healthcare staff that came from hospitals or primary care, uh, we would have had a, even a higher death toll. Um, now that we're uh, carrying out a lot of testing uh, in heavily hit uh, neighborhoods and communities, we find that there's a cooperation between primary care physicians and uh, other parts of the healthcare system. So I think we've understood that uh, uh, that cooperation, that coalition of goodwill was essential. Uh, so it needs to be orchestrated, yes, which means that uh, there's a need for orchestrating, for regulating uh, that uh, um, coalition. So there are times for, be for orchestrating, there are times for regulating, there are times for financing. Um, and um, uh, I think a lot of questions that we've uh, bombarded uh, regional health agencies with, uh, and it is their responsibility, but we need to ask ourselves those questions. And uh, I think there's a crest line, um, yeah, because the, our prime minister that left uh, today, uh, uh, and uh, I want to um, uh, uh, borrow this term from him. I think that regional scale was essential. We have 53 uh, critical care beds in uh, Val d'Oise, um, and uh, I think um, we could have had ex excessive deaths. Um, and we've had an excessive death, but it wasn't linked to the capacity in critical care beds. When um, we um, uh, set up an uh, app with a startup company uh, and it, that made it possible for 35,000 staff members to be uh, sent uh, in support to uh, other uh, hospitals. And, um, and uh, so we've, we've had to uh, coordinate with the uh, private sector uh, and uh, but uh, but we have also to um, uh, uh, differentiate you know support to assisted living homes there's not one single uh, department department in uh, Paris region where the organization was the same because uh, sometimes primary uh, care physicians were already organized because assisted uh, home uh, assisted living homes were all already organized or not so uh, during the crisis we devised solutions that will have to um, uh, actually learn from and because we've realized that we were able to do things that we uh, 
did not think ourselves capable of doing. And uh, um, um, so um, uh, we've talked about the regional scale and also the local um, uh, area. Uh, and we talked about it uh, with uh, Domus V. And this crisis has taught us that we, uh, that, that um, caregivers and healthcare personnel had amazing capacity to uh, uh, weather the crisis. But we tend to think that there's one vis invisible hand that organized all of that. Uh, uh, so uh, I think this crisis has been uh, um, managed and administered, but it's been administered differently. So to uh, um, um, increase exponentially the number of uh, critical care beds, such as we have done in the Paris region, was made possible because of the incredible work of amazing teams. Um, uh, because uh, they um, all worked in the same direction. And if there's one lesson to uh, learn, um, uh, because if we, if the only conclusion we draw is that we did not cooperate enough, we did not coordinate enough, we'll be back in a crisis uh, very soon. So we, uh, we found solutions to uh, overcome those obstacles. So um, it's not only that doctors uh, were great at organizing themselves to get critical beds, but it's also, yes, not only the doctors. Regional health agencies uh, got organized, uh, 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 you know, um, and uh, you know, uh, amongst the uh, people uh, in uh, the medical uh, staff that uh, came down with COVID, uh, they uh, all of them uh, came uh, back to work. And average age for people in critical beds in 2018 was 61. In 2019, 61 years, and it's t the average age of people in uh, critical uh, beds are is still 61. So uh, all people needed to needed to be hospitalised in critical beds. This is not my track record. It is the track record of uh, the regional health agency. So it's a system that um, uh, was under a lot of uh, under a big strain before. It's still under strain, uh, and we'll have to work and tackle these problems. Uh, oh, to collectively. Well, let's try to decide uh, to open new leads or new tracks. So, B Roselyne Bachelot, again, you were at the origin of the original uh, uh, health care agency. So, there is a kind of a, a sort of a paradox. I mean, you wanted this institution to be the instrument of decentralization of health care. And today it is being blamed for being the instrument of centralism and bureaucracy. So uh, is it because you, you, is it totally wrong or is it because we didn't go far enough in decentralization? Well, ask the fundamental question. Should the French system be centralized or decentralized? In some countries, it is a decentralized system, like in Germany. It is not a point, uh, absolutely, it's not a legal administrative uh, issue. It is a citizen issue. Do we accept to have in France a uh, healthcare system different in Bretagne or in the Provence of Côte d'Azur? I don't think so. I think the, con the citizen consensus, the national consensus, is based on a a uh, regalian uh, ad approach to the healthcare, to healthcare. It's a joint, it's a common heritage, and we cannot reshuffle that just after a discussion in the parliament or, uh, or among few experts. So uh, when we've seen the, uh, when we see the French system belong, uh, you know, pertains to a regalian uh, dimension, which may include regional nations, that a citizen, basically, in terms of health care, a citizen should be treated equally in every part of the territory. So now we'll do deconcentration. Deconcentration, and be, it has been proven through this crisis that the good level, the prop appropriate level, is the region putting it as a footnote that, and I'm saying it and I say it again, that the territorial reform of 2015 has been a totally a total disaster from the, for the regional law health care agency because the Commission of the Regions been I mean, for, uh, for just a, a new administration to have changed without any 
proper benefit, political benefit or budgetary benefit. The very configuration of the region was totally uh, monstrous. They, they were merged. I mean, I mean, when you make the new Aquitaine from several regions, well, clearly there is one uh, agency, New Aquitaine, to be reconfigured itself within a uh, total, uh, uh, under, you know, in, in the absurd situation. And even though they are departmental branch, but we we were able to place the regional agency further away from the citizens. So that that's a, a key element. Then uh, come to this notion of deconcentration in the regional healthcare agencies. You need a political steering, and this political steering, um, you know. Uh, I used to attend all the meetings of the uh, um, regional healthcare agencies. I don't believe my successors did the same. And this political steering is essential because it means that we don't just do decree or, you know, official laws. If you don't have a political steering, you end up to have a technocratic steering, and that's not good. And then, unlike what people think, I don't think that the French healthcare system is over administered. In fact, it is under administered, and especially in the regional agencies, because we know in the uh, we feel that there are administrative agents nasty who crawl in the in the in the uh, corridors. No, it's not that at all. So I think the what I feel so, uh, what I regret is that the uh, the the constitution of the uh, regional agencies were the means to uh, control citizens. Well, they were like accountants, but they're not accountants. I mean, well, good management, I mean, the good financial management is logical. I mean, that's, I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, there is good management and bad management. Accounting management doesn't exist as such, especially in a, in a, a system such as the French hospitals. But uh, that applies also to, uh, uh, you know, current me general medicine. But I think it is under admitted and we don't have enough staff in the regional agencies because once uh, you deal with tasks such as dealing with the medical social or with uh, uh, town uh, public medicine, you know, uh, uh, urban social medicine, well, uh, you know, how many people in Ile-de-France? In Ile-de-France, uh, 1,042 uh, staff, half of them in the department, in the department, and half at the uh, head office. The healthcare system in Ile-de-France uh, is about 38 billion euros. And, um, you know, I deal with 8 billion, 8.5 billion uh, expenditure for healthcare, and I think one of the major challenges. But the, this national discussion is that we, sh we the risk is that we would uh, uh, shift healthcare from democracy to technocracy. So, but we need uh, we need skill, competence, uh, and negotiation with other uh, operators. But the, basically, you know, the discussion on healthcare will. Uh, pull out of the field of specialists. Uh, it is now the first concern of the French. It's a bit of a challenge for us, but it's fundamental to know that we dealing with huge amounts of money and and therefore we are being asked to report, you know, uh, more, uh, you know, almost on a daily basis, you know, on, uh, uh, on the way we spend that money. We don't have a lack of uh, or too, too much politics, but we have to, we don't have enough poli uh, politicians. So, Jean Rotner, uh, you said early on that they, we, need a, we need a boss either the regional agency or the préfet. Now, who should be the leader? Who should be the, uh, the boss, the préfet or the regional agency? So how can we solve that problem? I don't know if there is a conflict. Uh, clearly, there is a crisis. And in a crisis, you need someone who will do the coordination and who will lead the teams that can contribute to the solution of the crisis. So uh, I think you cannot be at one stage in situations where the prefect will say, okay, I stop now because my competence stop here and this is the regional, and now it's the regional agency. There must be between institutions some form of coherence and coordination, you know, much better than what we have so till now. And therefore, 
At one stage, is it the préfet who should take over when it is a kind of a crisis as we had? I don't know if we have to talk about uh, authority or, or, or authora, authoritarianism. But and, uh, I agree with what we said, uh, this Bachelot said, regional scale is good as long as, uh, you know, we all, every player plays its role, you know. There is uh, a zone prefer, the, from the region prefer, who can mobilize uh, our force, civil defense, healthcare uh, uh, teams, you know, and they should do this in full coherence with the uh, regional agency. I mean, uh, I don't see the problem there. Now, if you allow me, just to react to what has been said, as a president of a region, I consider in terms of uh, uh, land development, well, for the development of a young household somewhere, you need the high uh, broadband information, information mobility, and so on. So, you know, basically the uh, the regulators work well, you know, and they are major determinant, which is healthcare. When I want to settle somewhere, I want to know if there is a doctor, if I, if there is a maternity, if there is a hospital, and therefore in our country we must establish a link between politics. An administration between national framework, as Rosaline said earlier on, and possibly local responsibility, because clearly subjects can be measured in terms of uh, 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 medical equipment and so on and so forth, while respecting this uh, uh, quality and Republican, uh, you know, but uh, some uh, collectivities, you know, and what we do for high schools take new responsibilities in terms of uh, uh, management and uh, support to medical equipment, you know. I'm ready to do it in my region, where well, at least a discussion I'm holding with Olivier Véran today, the Minister of Health, I suggest that they should experiment while respecting all the aspects, uh, you know, of uh, in terms of uh, health uh, safety, it is essential. And possibly we could go further because the, uh, you know, the, the each department has a different uh, set of facilities or institutions and so forth, and there possibly the regional aspect of our uh, collectivity in some zone would make it possible to have additional equipment in a coordinated strategy, uh, coordinated by the regional health care agency. I mean, that would be quite normal, in my opinion. No, I take advantage of this. You were saying you are at the heart of the Mulhouse Hospital, and now, do we've said uh, during this crisis that the, uh, you know, like the, the, the accounting obsession, you know, the, like rating all the activities or tariffing all the activities, according to many doctors, this is the mother of all problems in hospital. Now, do you share this view? Dear your friends in the Mulhouse Hospital, do you share this view, the fact that, you know, well, you know, the, uh, the, uh, we, this, the, um, the fee, the fee of services, yeah, but you know, but again, they, we have to look at the, uh, uh, the the feedback from medical teams. But I think it should be nu nuanced, based on missions of uh, general interest, on uh, on efficiency, on uh, on quality of hospitality. Uh, you know, there should be links between the uh, accounting and other parameters or the aspect that would uh, provide as a form of equality. Uh, you know, public systems and private systems. So we, through the uh, reflection, we should uh, uh, approach the two systems and um, enable them to interact or act in uh, an objective for mutual shared interest and pub general public services. Often we we all, all too often we said that the public service is taking like the the, the 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 crowd and private hospitals, you know, select their patients. Well, there is patient selection in public hospital. Let's be honest, you know, uh, you know, sometimes you know we the the the, the um, so we maybe we should modulate the healthcare system as it exists, Rosaline. Well, first, I'd like to say that I did not create fee-for-service uh, 
as a system. Often I'm being blamed for it, but I just wanted to make that clear. So fee-for-service accounts for 50% of uh, hospital financing, only 50%. Uh, the, so there's the other 50% in other sectors and other uh, financing um, systems. For a uh, um, a new par a newcomer, you know, uh, trying to, to to find out what that whole fee for service uh, system is uh, about, but hospital staff that manage that do not. Uh, o o only manage some um, types of uh, medical procedures, and they're not stupid, and they often do that very well. So it's not that confusing. And fee for service as a system can probably be improved. Um, and quite often uh, it's being um, fine-tuned and improved. And I remember when I was a health minister, there already had been uh, a lot of improvements and uh, uh, fine-tuning. but. Uh, uh, you have to be careful because uh, um, uh, sometimes you want to factor in uh, other characteristics such as uh, um, the um, how complex certain medical procedures are, uh, how um, um, factor in the, 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 the fact that some people come from disadvantaged backgrounds. Um, so you can make for more complexity as you try to fine tune or improve. Uh, so, um, it always uh, comes back to the uh, uh, issue of financing. So, uh, blaming only fee-for-service uh, system uh, is uh, simplistic. Uh, we have a, a listener who um, asks us, um, what do we blame fee-for-service uh, for exactly? And could we imagine uh, to uh, go back to another mode of financing, which was a global endowment? Well, we know that uh, the global endowment uh, actually favored some people who um, were members of the Rotary Club and uh, had uh, could uh, speak with the um, uh, French president on his mobile. So it was not as democratic. Is that what you are trying to say? It was not democratic at all. It did not factor in. Um, the uh, professionalism of uh, a hospital or um, how innovative it was. But uh, the, um, the matter that comes uh, recurrently is the question of the relevance of uh, uh, care and medical procedures. Uh, you can have a rate of uh, um, uh, hip replacement or knee replacement in some uh, hospitals that can be uh, higher than in others. But as uh, Ms. Bachelot said, uh, there are constant improvements. Um, uh, and so uh, fee for, the fee-for-service system uh, is, is not a, a way of uh, charging for every medical uh, procedure. Um, but uh, uh, we are moving uh, back towards a global endowment system, but factoring in a number of character, uh, characteristics. We went into this crisis and we will probably come out of this crisis with something uh, that's clearer and a clearer view of things. Hospitals need to reorganize, but um, they've needed to reorganize during the crisis. Now they'll probably need to reorganize in the future, but they shouldn't have to reorganize without any resources. Um, oh, and if we want our health system to be back on its two feet, uh, we need to allocate the right resources. Bernard Ben Said, about the fee-for-service system, um, I think we've mentioned the main problem, which is that it leads to an, um, uh, the charging of um, uh, medical procedures that are not needed. Um, so that is a, a, a problem with uh, fee, the fee-for-service system. Um, we know what the remedy is. The remedy is a fee for um, health uh, health care uh, pathway. Uh, you mean that it would be to charge for the whole um, 
uh, pathway uh, that a patient uh, uh, is on um, in all the care that is provided to them. Yes, that I would include hospitals, but also primary care physicians and uh, laboratories. So uh, that's very difficult. And that could include also assisted living homes. So we uh, would need a uh, global operator uh, for each local area. So that's very important, because if we had a single operator uh, in uh, each local area, that would solve the problem of fee-for-service and the problem of silos between uh, different uh, uh, um, healthcare provision uh, uh, places. I think things are pretty simple. We have currently regional health agencies that are wearing two hats, regulator and authority. You can't uh, 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 be both the regulator of health in your local area and be um, a health authority. So uh, regional health agencies should be regulators uh, uh, and the authority should be the state. So I think we need to separate things. There should be a regulatory agency and there should be an authority and they should be kept separate. We talked about uh, local areas and local communities. Um, uh, of course, when the state makes a mistake, then the mistake is spread everywhere. Uh, when there is no mistake, of course, that's a good thing because there is no mistake. There isn't any mistake uh, everywhere. Um, and uh, we've realized that for caregivers uh, who uh, work uh, at the home uh, of the person they care for, uh, these caregivers should uh, be managed by the uh, local area or the département. Um, and uh, you have some poor departments or local areas that have uh, 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 high needs. Uh, so uh, that leads to an um, under provision of care. Um, so that is a problem when we talk about dependency. So those are serious mistakes that have to do with the organization of the healthcare care system. And if your only answer is to say, we need more, we need more, which is what this Segur uh, roundtable uh, discussion has, uh, uh, it, it, it might be about, uh, so we're only uh, at 4.5% uh, of our health budget for hospital staff, which is um only one point uh, 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 over uh, Germany. So we haven't solved anything. All the dysfunctionings um, have not solved things and asking for more resource uh, uh, all the time is not going to solve all the issues. So, well, you um, actually uh, uh, made a nice uh, link with the question of dependency. Uh, um, good and, 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 and smoothly operating hospitals are often in privileged uh, areas or uh, uh, and um, uh, assisted living homes are often in more disadvantaged uh, areas. Well, the whole field of uh, dependency uh, is in the hands of departements, and uh, departements are very unequal in um, in their capacity to finance uh, uh, care for the elderly. So we're talking about what should be done uh, for elderly uh, people. Uh, there's uh, there are lots of opportunities at the moment. Uh, we've got a uh, bill on uh, uh, dependency and uh, caring for the very old. Uh, that's on the table. Well, it was already on the table in 2011, says Ms. Ba Ms. Bachelot. Um, but I'm talking resources here, allocating resources. Um, 
So we need more resources, but we need more ideas. If we allocate more resources to caring for dependent elderly people, uh, there's a huge need in human resources. I said so before, so we really need to allocate a lot of resources. We need to make those jobs more attractive, so we need to pay them better. Well, yes, we need to pay them better, that's for sure. And we need to value them socially. They should be uh, more... Um, they should be better considered. So it's not only about uh, uh, financial compensation, it's also about social recognition. That's not easy to do. Um, yes, and uh, career paths uh, as well that should be improved on. Yes, Ms. Uh, El Khomri. Uh, uh, came up with uh, some uh, uh, ideas uh, at the ministry. Um, so if we're talking about the very old, uh, we uh, need to um, uh, really uh, do uh, better on all these fronts. And uh, uh, Ms. Bachelot talked about those assisted uh, living homes. We should be able to do better in how medically equipped these assisted uh, living homes uh, are. Um, personally, uh, I am in favor of uh, health uh, uh, charging for healthcare globally. Uh, it's extremely efficient. But what's uh, uh, what I uh, uh, regret, uh, and you know, I uh, have in my portfolio many assisted uh, living home, and. Um, we know that that it makes for better control of expenditure. It makes for better uh, care for patients. Uh, uh, so uh, we need to strengthen the medical uh, component of uh, assisted living uh, homes. Um, we know it works. Uh, but feedback is um, long to come to reach us. To give you a, a, a concrete example, it is a global endowment uh, to uh, an uh, assisted living home that makes it possible for these homes to add a physician on their payroll. So it's extremely positive. Uh, it uh, exists already, so we need to spread it, to generalize it. And uh, secondly, uh, a lot of French people would like to uh, be able to grow old in their own home. But suffice it to say that nothing's been uh, uh, prepared for this, because we need to fit people's homes so that they can stay at home. Uh, um, and that's a major issue when we talk about care for the elderly. It's making it possible for uh, the elderly to uh, grow old uh, uh, in their own homes. But there's no economic model for that, which means that there's uh, uh, no quality and no uh, 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 promoting of staff. So we need to restructure, reorganize home care. Um, so that's a big project. There's a lot of work to be done. And we should open up assisted living homes. We have 8,000 assisted living homes in France, which means that there's, there's a, a network that really covers all of France. We should be able to mutualize uh, the, the resources. I'm thinking human resources, skills, and break silos uh, between these assisted uh, living homes. And we need to break silos between those assisted living homes and home care. Assisted living homes should be uh, part of the solution. And we're uh, fortunate to have a very dense network uh, in France of assisted living homes. Who'd like to uh, add something, a quick word about assisted living homes? Uh, I think uh, we all um, agree that assisted living homes can be a stepping stone if we can make it possible for some elderly people uh, to uh, stay at home. Um, uh, there's been a drop by 17% of hospitalization amongst uh, the uh, elderly. Uh, 
Um, just one quick word, which is true uh, uh, of the elderly people, but not only. There's one lesson that I, I learned from this crisis, uh, which is that inequalities and excess uh, death is not an excess uh, excess deaths once you've um, uh, come into the hospital. It is an inequality in access to health care, in um, uh, the uh, uh, provision of care in the area where you live, and it is an inequality that is superimposed uh, uh, on top of uh, economic and social inequalities. And public health is part of the provision of uh, care. That seems a truism. But to make it possible for people to age uh, well, you have to try and make it so that they are not ill. Um, that is a, 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 a given. But uh, we have to do better than what we've done, what we've seen during the crisis in uh, deprived areas such as Saint-Saint-Denis. Um, I, um, I think that we can... Uh, learn lessons from uh, what is done uh, uh, better in other sectors and in other countries. Unfortunately, we're uh, coming to the end of this session. Of course, there would have been so much more we could have discussed. Uh, Pierre-Yves Joffard, the takeaways from this session? Well, uh, takeaways, uh, it's difficult because it's been a very rich discussion. Having said that, what I will take away from this uh, uh, discussion is that we all agree on the necessity to go from um, a vision of care that is focused on care to a vision that would be focused on uh, health. Why? Because health uh, calls for a holistic uh, vision. Care is uh, organized and managed in silos with the private, private hospitals, public hospitals, uh, primary care physicians, um, residential care. Uh, this has been demonstrated by the crisis, and that was really interesting in what we heard, what we've heard. Some situations have made it possible from, for some um, stakeholders locally to come up with um, ad hoc coalitions. There were not coalitions uh, that came f uh, after a decree of the state. Those were um, uh, coalitions that were set up on the basis of local solidarity. So this has been emphasized. So there's a necessity for local stakeholders, local players that do away with silos. And often they have to overcome barriers and too global an organization of the provision of care that is too centered on hospitals and uh, that is in silos. So uh, we'll probably have to uh, question that uh, more some more and amongst the, 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 the what was raised more steering is needed but not technocratic steering you know technocracy is a monster we have to do away with technocratic uh, steering um, so uh, the the uh, prefet and uh, local uh, uh, um, authorities and elected representatives uh, are uh, 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 take their responsibilities from uh, elections. We talked about uh, a number of uh, uh, we talked about local governments. We talked about prefects. We didn't mention mayors. We've just had municipal elections in uh, in France, and mayors have the, have a responsibility also. Uh, uh, and maybe they've been infantilized a, a bit during this crisis. Uh, well, thank you for uh, the prescription, doctor. Uh, it opens up a number of avenues worth exploring. And we'll probably meet again several times during the year uh, to discuss this. And you will probably meet uh, uh, to discuss these. Many thanks and see you soon. <laughs>